Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I uh, wanted to follow up on um, the line of questioning that um, Congresswoman Bonam Bonamici started at the beginning of the hearing and just talk a little bit more about uh, job creation. And I'm directing my question to you, uh, Mr. Swift. Um, you had mentioned that 35 jobs would be created from the Keystone Pipeline. I wanted to really just explore a little bit about looking at job creation at, at Keystone compared to job creation, um, the job creation potential, I think, for sustainable alternative energy projects. And by the way, um, the comparison of Texas and California, I'm from California, and I, we've been very focused on uh, sustainable alternative energies and its job creation as well. So if you could comment on that, I'd appreciate it. Certainly. In, in 2011, a Brookings study showed that uh, clean energy jobs was, were one of the fastest growing sectors in the United States, growing twice as fast as the economy. There are over 2.7 million clean energy jobs today, uh, and a consortium of about 800 uh, clean energy entrepreneurs recently reported that in 2012 their companies hired over 100,000 uh, uh, personnel. And these jobs tend to be, I mean, in clean energy you tend to see a higher manufacturing base uh, element to them. And in another recent study uh, that, in, that evaluated the job creation impact by dollar invested, it found that uh, clean energy, for every dollar invested, you got more than three times as many jobs produced than the fossil fuel industry. Thank you for that. Um, also, I wanted to, uh, on the environmental side of, of this particular project, uh, in your testimony, I think uh, you wrote and spoke to that um, the high temperature tar sands pipelines are at a greater risk of leaks, um, and I think you cited a study in Kern County in California. And so the question is, it, is it fair to say that railroad trains carrying tar sands are also at greater uh, risk? Of leaks. Well, one of the, the key things to keep in mind when it comes to railroads moving tar sands, while many railroads are moving Bach and crude, there has been very little tar sands by rail. A Reuters story just a few weeks ago showed that you know, around 20,000 barrels a day uh, was being moved to the Gulf Coast by rail or barge. And one of the, I mean, the northern Alberta tar sands producers have been under many of the exact same market incentives to move their product by rail. The difficulty is they don't have the, the, the profit margins to afford the higher cost. They are more than 900 miles farther away from refinery markets. And, in fact, the mere process of moving tar sands by rail is more expensive. It requires specialized infrastructure. And you can actually fit less tar sands crude in each uh, rail um, car uh, relative to light crude. And we are not seeing the infrastructure being built out yet. Thank you. And uh, my last question is, uh, I think Mr. Helms testified that his uh, son-in-law um, is a farmer, I believe, and said he had no objection to the Keystone Pipeline. And so I just you, you know, wanted to uh, hear your comments vis-a-vis um, -vis rural areas and um, uh, will operators in rural areas be able to respond quickly in the event that there was uh, some kind of accident or spill? You know, I have talked to folks in Nebraska and South Dakota. The, one of the farmers who discovered the 20,000 gallon spill on the Keystone One pipeline was a first responder. He had no idea what to do in the event of a tar sand spill. And first responders are often the ones that detect leaks that, that have to deal with it initially, and they don't have the training to deal with it. And as far as farming goes, farmers in Nebraska are very opposed to the project, uh, and they are they're concerned about its impact to their water. And also, looking at the climate impacts of, uh, you know, warmer temperatures, uh, disrupted weather on farming. Last year we had the hottest uh, year on temperature. Half of our corn crop was uh, destroyed in a drought. So farmers are on both ends concerned about their wa water quality and also feeling the brunt of climate change. And do we have evidence of what your statement that you just made about ranchers, farmers' concerns? And certainly, certainly. And uh, statements, and, uh, and I, I can provide additional evidence of that. Thank you. And I will yield the balance of my time.